We want to do beautiful drawings of people, and drawing people comes down to balancing two things, the structural and the gestural. So gesture drawing is a huge part of learning, life drawing, and also the most fun part in my opinion, but there's a problem. So apparently all you need to do is feel the flow, capture the energy and find the rhythm of the pose and stuff like that. And those words are great, they're all sort of true, but they don't mean that much when you're still trying to figure it out, when you don't yet fully get it, right? And so gesture doesn't have to be this mysterious esoteric thing. It can be way more uh, definable and specific and understandable than all of that. And that's what this series is gonna aim to do. We're gonna demystify gesture drawing. I'm gonna suggest in this video that the first level of gesture is angles, and that is where you start, which is good because angles are easy to define clearly. So most teachers start you off with big gestural curves, but the curves that you end up using need to come from a clear understanding of the angles we're gonna talk about in this video. So we need to start at angles, and I'm gonna break them down into three types. Angles are easy to define. There's nothing mysterious about them. Uh, it's not about feeling flows. You can just hold up your pencil to the line across the shoulders and that's gonna be the shoulder angle. So if you wanna get quite specific about the shoulder angle, we can do that. You could say it's the angle between the acromion points on the shoulder. So that's the bony bit that sticks out on the shoulder on each side. It kind of becomes more of an indent when the arm is raised. You could also just see it as the angle across the heart of the shoulder on each side if you like. And sometimes one shoulder is raised and the other one isn't, or they're on a different angle. And in that case, you could find that angle across the shoulder, but also find the angles of the collarbones, and that's gonna create a kind of triangle shape. And that triangle shape is pretty useful to start using. Then you look for the angle of the rib cage, and a good starting point for that is the sternum, the middle of the chest. There's a line running down the middle of the chest. Then you know that the angle across the bottom of the rib cage is gonna be roughly perpendicular to that. On the back, the spine and the outline together give you some idea of the ribcage angle, but what you can see can get a bit confusing. The spine itself is a bit flexible. The musculature around the spine affects the curves that you see there. The muscles around the upper back affects the outline that you see, so it is trickier. However, as you become better at seeing the ribcage angle from the front, you will get a good intuitive sense of it from the back too. Then there's the angle of the pelvis, which from the front is best seen as the angle between the aces points, which are the bony bits that stick out on your pelvis, around the level of the waistband on a pair of trousers or pants. And you can probably feel those bony bits on yourself. On the back, the pelvis angle would be the angle across the two dots of the sacrum, which you can see on most people. And as you gain experience, you'll pick up on more and more visual clues for all these angles but also you'll start to get an intuitive sense of where the ribcage and pelvis are. There's also the angle of the head, which is really important, and that's about seeing the axis line that goes around the head, through the eyebrows and through the tops of the ears, and that idea is part of the Loomis head. The thing that's interesting is how these angles relate to each other, so any differences in these angles are gonna be something you wanna bring out in the drawing. Eventually, you won't be drawing all these angles onto the page, you'll just be seeing them and using them. But for now, I think it's useful to actually practice drawing these angles. You could draw them straight onto the reference image if you like, uh, or just draw them onto some paper. So these angles that I'm talking about are super useful to gesture drawing, but they're based on these landmarks, which are structural points on the figure. So you can see that the structure and the gesture, they're inextricably linked, and either way, a great place to start with your figure drawing is by starting to see these landmarks. And that's why in our roadmap, we've got a PDF that takes you through the sequence of skills to learn when you're learning life drawing. Number one is the landmarks. And then number two is these angles that we're talking about in this video. And this might be a good moment to explain more clearly what I meant by figure drawing being about balancing structure and gesture. So it's an idea I first came across from a Steve Houston book and I like it a lot. I think it really brings clarity. So I think of the structural as being all the parts, so it'd be the anatomy. Also the simplified forms of the figure. Would, those are two different ways of looking at the structure of the figure. The structure has a sort of right and a wrong to it. It's quite concrete and quite definable. 
The landmarks are part of that structure. Concerns about proportions and accuracy when you're drawing a figure, those are more on the structural side of things as well. The gestural side is what separates us from just being machines, just a lot of parts stuck together. So the gesture breathes life into the figure. It makes it organic. It makes things flow and feel natural and lively. If you make your drawing just too structural, then it's going to lack life. On the other hand, if you made it too gestural, it might be kind of cool, but it might not end up as recognizably human without any of that structure. When you can balance the two, it's great. So some artists will lean more towards the structural and others will lean more towards the gestural. Often my favorites, like Richard Powell here, tend to lean towards the gestural, but you can see how he does these gestural quick sketches built onto a really clear structure with strong angles. So I see the angles as the link between the gesture and the structure. So they are angles between structural points, but they become the heart of the gesture too. And they're more important to the gesture. You know, a lack of strong angles will ruin a gesture drawing, but it wouldn't really ruin a structural drawing. So back to the angles. The second type of angle is the angle between the major forms, and this is just as important. So if the pelvis is off at an angle relative to the rib cage, you really want to see and capture that. If the head is off to an angle relative to the rib cage as well, you want to capture that. You don't want to put everything into a nice vertical straight line because that's boring. So at this point you might be saying, yeah, that's nice and everything, but that's a bunch of straight lines. And gesture is about fluidity and organic, beautiful curves, not these straight lines. But to me, gesture is just what breathes life into the drawing, makes it more dynamic and creates a visual feeling to the pose. And these straight line drawings have a lot of those elements, even if they don't have lots of curves. So maybe this isn't really a proper gesture drawing but it's what lies underneath a successful gesture drawing if your drawing has loads of fancy curves but doesn't have these angles it's going to lack its gestural core its gestural foundation so which of these two drawings captures this poses gesture better i would argue it's the straight line version even though it's not got all those curves and flows to it because it does have the angles So the third type of angle, well, so far you might have noticed that the angles that I've mentioned, they don't really make a drawing, they don't really make a figure drawing. So another type of important angle is the actual lines that you use for the drawing, the outlines of the figure in particular. So it's useful to look for a squash side of the torso and a stretch side to the torso when that exists, when you're looking at the torso's outline. And usually when you're starting life drawing, most people will try to see every little change in the figure's outline and capture all the little bumps, but you need to cut through the noise and find the big major angle changes. So using a straight edge for this exercise really forced me to focus on just the big angle changes that really matter and ignore all the little nuance uh, and stuff that can be removed. So what about arms and legs? I've been on about the head and torso a lot here. What about the angles of the arms and legs? Well, even though they can be more extreme and all over the place, they're sort of supplemental to the angles of the torso and the head. So for example, a straight torso uh, and head with legs and arms all over the place is often not as visually interesting as straight arms and legs with a dynamic torso and head. So as soon as I'm seeing a pose, I'm looking to the relationship between pelvis, rib cage, and head first, and the arms and legs are secondary. So that might seem kind of subjective, but in my opinion, it tends to work out to be true. It's a bit like a boxer throwing a powerful punch. They don't just use their arm, right? The power doesn't usually come from their arm. The arm is just something that's thrown out there. The power comes from their torso, from their hips, from their trunk. So aside from the overall angle of the limbs, there are two other important characteristics that you can capture with your straight lines for the arms and legs. The first is how the limbs taper down. So the straight lines get closer together overall as you go down the limb, like from the shoulder to the wrist uh, or from the hips down to the ankle. The second is weight and balance for the legs, but I'm going to cover that a little bit later in this series. 
Now you do wanna push your angles a little bit. So you don't wanna push them so much that you need to actually change the drawing or change the pose a lot uh, from what you're seeing. You just wanna nudge them a little bit for now. In future, you might exaggerate the pose more, uh, but that requires some more additional skill that we haven't covered yet. So I would just exaggerate the angles just a little bit for now. And when it comes to your gestural drawing, I really recommend looking for and practicing these three types of angles before you worry about your line quality or expressive curves and all that other flowing stuff because a lot of the gesture problems that I see come back to these three types of angles. The angle of the shoulders, rib cage, pelvis, and head themselves, and then the angles between them, so how they relate to each other, and then just the outline of the torso, especially in terms of the squash side and the stretch side. Those are the things that we're really, really concerned about and that we need to practice. So hopefully this video has started to demystify some of this gesture drawing stuff. Um, we haven't yet got to the beautiful curves that you see, but those curves that we're gonna look at in part two, they're all gonna be built on the angles that we're looking at here. Now finding these landmarks and building up this idea of the structure of the figure, getting good at all of the stuff we're gonna talk about in this series, it's tricky. And so if you need a little bit more help, if you wanna accelerate your progress and your learning, I really recommend joining up with our course. We're gonna run it again in October. We don't run it too often, it's the first time in six months. It's really powerful. I've seen so many people's drawings transformed by it. If you wanna find out more, check out the link below. And uh, there should be two useful videos up on the screen, so check one of those out. Thanks for hanging out with me in this video, and I'll see you in the next one.